In this video, we are going to be doing our first project of this Python programming for beginners course, where we will be creating tic-tac-toe. So before we get started, I'm going to show you my implementation of tic-tac-toe. I'll then give you basic instructions on how you can create your own tic-tac-toe game, and then you can go off and create your own. Then I'll show you the source code for what I created. So let's run this. I'll ask you to enter the player one's name, so that will be Josh. Then we can do player two's name, which we'll name Bob. And you can see here, we total games, there have been zero games played. Josh is 1-0, Bob is 1-0, and there have been no draws. It has drawn the board for us, which we can see is the 3 by 3 grid, and it's telling us that it is Josh's turn. So we first select a row, top one is 0, middle one is 1, and the bottom one is 2. So if we wanted to go to the top left, we'll do row 0, and then column 0. It then redraws the board, and we can see that it's put a naught at the top left. Now for Bob's turn, if he wants to do the top right, he can do 0, 2. And something I should point out is when it's on your turn to do a row, it'll list the available rows they can do. Then when you select a row, it'll show you the columns which are available. So as I already put my naught on row 0, column 0, and Bob selected row 0, column 0 is no longer available. So if we continue on, if Josh does row 1, column 1, it's now put in the middle there. Now for Bob, he'll play on the bottom left to stop me from winning. Now I'm going to go row 1, column 0, which is a mistake because Bob has the space free, so he can now do row 1, column 2. And as you can see here, Bob is the winner. Now, do you want to play again? Which we'll do yes to. And we can see, total games won, Bob has won. And instead of Josh going first this turn, it's now Bob's turn to go first. So let's go through and play a game. So let's go again and play a game. As you can see here, Bob won again, because I am not very good at this. So this time, we'll play again, and we'll do a draw. So this game is ended in a draw, as there's no three in a row. So this game is ended in a draw, and we can see here, draw is one. So here's the instructions file for you to create your own tic-tac-toe game. It's got a general layout as to how you could design your game, and it's got comments for the details that you need to do. I've got a link in the description to GitHub where you can download it if you want. So I'll just quickly go through to explain the general layout of how I designed it and then you can go off and do it yourself. So I create a class called player and inside the player class they will have a name and a number for how many wins I've done. Then for the game itself, create a class tic-tac-toe. Inside the initialization method you create player1 and player2 and then you create the 3x3 grid. This will have a method called draw which prints out the current state of the board. So I've commented on an example here of how it could look like. We have a method for check if winner. What this method does is it goes through the current state of the board and checks to see if there are any three in a row. So it checks the verticals, checks the horizontals, then checks the diagonals, and it returns whether a winner is found or not. Where the method for valid rows, this was used when you're choosing which row you want to place uh, your piece on. So if, the, if one row has all three columns full, it won't show you that as being an available option. So find the rows which can be played on. It iterates through the rows to find any unplayed positions, and then returns a list of the valid rows that can be played on. Then there's valid columns, which is pretty much the same thing as valid rows, except you pass it the row that you're playing on, and then it iterates through each column in that row and returns all places that can be played on. Then we've got the actual play method, which is where the game logic is running. So it's the function to run the game. It's running this method called initialize game state. I forgot to include it in here, but inside this method it's basically setting up all the variables for when a new game starts, so it clears the board and anything else that needs to be done. So inside here will be a while loop which is running for each turn that's done. So each player takes turns to place a cross or a naught. We retrieve a list of the valid rows. We then give the player the option to input which row they want. If the row that they enter is not valid, it will then go back up and repeat for them to enter a valid row. Well then, once the valid row is found, we'll do the same thing for valid columns. So you're running the valid columns and you're entering the selected row. Same thing again, repeat until a valid column is selected. Once a valid position is selected, then the player's naught or cross will be placed on the grid. Then when that's done, we run the check if winner function. So we display who the winner is, give the player plus one to their wins, and end the game. So outside of this class is where we'll actually run the code. So creating an, an instance of this tic-tac-toe game right here. We then have some logic for if the game should be played continuously, like as we saw, press Y to play again. So inside this loop, we will have tic-tac-toe dot play, and then this will play the game logic. Then outside of here, this is where you give the player the choice of playing again, and based on their option, it will either play again or exit. 
So like I said, the link to this GitHub is in the description of the video. So give it a shot. I'm going to give you some time to try to figure it out yourself. And if you get stuck or you're completed, you can see my code implementation. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds and by the, when that time is up, I'll go through my implementation. Okay, so here is my code for tic-tac-toe. There's also a link in the description to this code for the GitHub page if you want to get a closer look at it. So I'm just going to go from top to bottom in how it works. So the player class is the exact same, no changes made there. So in the initialization method, I created some constant variables, which are, you can see by the capital letters, these are const variables. So in the grid, there are three rows, there are three cells, an empty cell is a space, then a naught is a capital O, and a cross is a capital X. We then create the players here. So we do self.player1 equals player, and then we do the input function for enter player one's name. So it's entering the name into the player initialization here and sets the name. So we do that. I then set total games to negative one, as we'll see below, we'll do a plus one when the game starts. So to draw, actually we'll come back to this and we'll look at the initialized game state. So we have self board. We haven't gone over this syntax yet, but I'll explain how it works by writing it out. So it's kind of weird as it sort of goes right to left. So it's kind of for underscore in range self dot rows. We're then doing for underscore in range self dot columns. And let's say self dot board is equal to a list. What it then does is we'll have row equals list. And then for iron range here, it will do row dot append self dot empty cell and then when it gets out of here it will do self dot board dot append row so as you can see here it takes up quite a lot of lines to do this but you can do this syntax to do it on one line so what self dot board will be in the end is it will be a list of list and then it'll end up like this for row one and then it will have rows two and three like that so that's essentially what is being produced by this so let's remove and continue on with the rest of it. Uh, we set the current turn to zero as we'll use this variable to decide which player's turn it is. And then over here is where we do total games plus one, which if we saw up here was negative one and then makes it zero. So if we go back to this draw function, we start off with draw rows, which is an empty list. We're gonna be going through each row in this list. Then for each value in a row, we're going to be joining it by a pipe symbol. So if we go back to the instructions and we go to the board example, we can see up here, sorry, X, space, and O are separated by these pipe symbols. So that's what this is doing. And in this loop, it'll be doing it for this row, this row, and this row. So once we've created draw rows, we are then going to be doing another join, but we are going to be joining by new line, then uh, six dashes, then new line, which, as we can see in the instructions, we've got this here. So it starts off a new line, which is over here. So it brings it down to here, does the lines, new line, then brings it back down to here. So that's how I went about drawing the actual game board. Although I didn't mention it, I have a method for display score. So you've got total games, which is self.total game, then the player one name and the player one wins, uh, the player two name and then player two wins. And then to do draw, what I did was total games minus player one wins, then minus player two wins. And then if there's any draws, it'll be the remainder of that. Okay, so for check winner, this was a pretty long function to do. So I start off with a dictionary called results. And I'm using the key winner found and have it false and then player none. So we're going to be going through all the logic. And then if it turns out that a row is three in a row, we make it so this is true. And then player is the player that got the three in a row. So this is the logic for checking the rows. We iterate through each row. We grab the value that's in the first row. If the value is not an empty cell, as in a player has already played on it, we're then going to initialize the winner found value as being true because we're going to be checking to see if it's not valid. So with that row, we're going to be going through all the values in it. And if the value in the row does not equal the row value, in other words, there is a different value in the row, so it can't be three in a row, the winner was not found and then we break from it then we go back to the top and we check the next row and run it again so if we go through every column in a row and it is three in a row so winner will still be true as this never runs so we have an if winner is true we then retrieve the player that did it so further along below we've got variables for player crosses which contains 
a reference to a player, so we have player noughts and player crosses. If the row contains crosses, results player equals self.player.crosses, and if it's not crosses, then it's not to one, and then we return a result. So if no rows were found, we'll then go onto the columns. So for this loop, we're just running it for the amount of columns that are on the board. We get the column value by grabbing the first row on the board and the current column we're looking at, so column zero, column one, column two. If it's not empty, then we go through. We then iterate through each of the rows in the board and check to see if the column in that row, if that's equal to column value, then it's three in a row. So it's pretty much the same logic as before and we'll go to the diagonals. So the diagonals were a bit more annoying because it can only really check one at a time. So we've got this top left to bottom right diagonal value. So we start off with row zero, column zero. So that'll be the top left of the board. So if it's not empty, we continue. And we're basically just looping through the board to get the values. So we start off at row zero, column zero, then go to row one, column one. So we have these row nums plus plus. And just same thing again, checking to see if it's the same value. And if it's if they're all the same value, same thing again, get the player and return it. And now I've got this other diagonal, which is bottom left to top right. So bottom left is row two, column zero. And it's same logic as here, just going through the diagonal. But in this case, it's row num minus one, and then column plus one, check to see if it's the same value. If it is, return. So if none of these were three in a row found, we're gonna be just returning this, where winner found equals false and player is none. Okay, so then this valid rows method, we have a rows list. We enumerate through the board, and then we enumerate through the columns of that row. If any column in a row is empty, then we add the row to this rows list, and then we return the row. Now for the valid columns, we pass an int for the row. We then enumerate through the board row, and if any column in that row is empty, then that is a valid column for that row. So for the actual game, so we run the initialize game state, which if we go back up, creates the board, or creates an empty board, sets the current turn to zero, and does a plus one to the total games. We then display the score, and as the way I made it, it you take turns, so play one starts as noughts, then the next game player two is noughts. We have if self.totalgames modulus two equals zero. Noughts is player one, and crosses is player two. So every even game, player one is noughts. Otherwise, every odd game, player two is noughts. So if a while loop which checks for the current turn, and there's only nine turns can be done on this three by three grid, we'd have it run so it's less than nine as it starts on turn zero. So we've got the current player variable which we're creating in here. So if the current turn is modulus two is even, is zero. So if the current turn is an even number, it is the player noughts' turn. If it's an odd turn, then it's cross's turn. So we then draw the game board. We print out whose turn it is. We retrieve the valid rows. We initialize the player select row as negative one as it's not a valid row. And then we retrieve the row that they want to use. So while selected row is not in valid rows, we then run this code. So we first try to turn the string into an int. If this fails, it goes down to here and it says, it is not a valid row, please enter a valid row. So we're grabbing the input again, the same thing up here, but we've just changed the message to say it was not valid. So we grab the row and then we run it again. If it is an int, but it is not a valid row, it's the same input message again. So select a new row, go back up, run again. So once a valid row is selected, we do the exact same thing, but valid columns. So we carry on there. Once a valid column is selected, we then go to the board, select the row, select the column. And if the current turn is even, then a nought is placed. Otherwise, a cross is placed. So once this piece has been placed on the board, we then check to see if a winner has been found or if there's three in a row. So if winner check, winner found, we then draw the board, increase the wins of the player by one, and we print that the player is the winner. We then break out of the loop and it goes to the end game part. If a winner is not found, we then increase the current turns by one. So we break out of this loop by either a winner being found or the current turn being nine. So if we go down here, if current turn equals nine, then we draw the game and the game has ended in a draw. So whatever the outcome, it will then go down to here, say, do you want to play again? So you either do a lowercase y or capital Y, and we check to see if it's in here. If it's in here, it will return a true, so true to play again, or false to quit the game. Where the actual code to run the game is here, we, like we had before, tic-tac-toe variable, play again equals true, while play again. What we had is play again equals tic-tac-toe.play because we're returning the output from here. So that is the first project of this Python programming for beginners course, where we created tic-tac-toe. If you have any problems in creating tic-tac-toe, feel free to message below and I'll do what I can to help. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos that are added to this Python programming for beginners course.